So the first thing I wanted to watch is Midwest Battles to Keep Invasive Carp Out of the Great Lakes. Because if you didn't know, I work primarily with carp. I haven't worked on the Great Lakes, but I've been at the Great Lakes. And the background of what I do, uh, I work mostly with fish and diseases. Um, so diseases and parasites in carp specifically as of late. But that's not, you know, specialization. It's just kind of how it's ended up mostly in aquaculture. Uh, so raising carp for, you know, food and other, but occasionally, you know, people like that do get called in to, to do stuff in the field, wild carp that are having it, especially like native carp, or, you know, find the weakness of a, an invasive carp, figure out what you can do against an invasive carp. So carp are really interesting to me. They're one of my favorite fish, although they're not that like unique or sick of a fish. They're just really unique. And they're just like really, I don't know, they embody what is a fish to me. They're just like the cool part of fish. So I wanted to watch this because I was curious. If you don't know, carp are highly invasive. European carp, Asian carp are just like destroying ecosystems in the United States. We're just getting like fucked up. I'm a third generation commercial fisherman. I've been doing it for about 22, 23 <laughs> the dude years. Dude, just throwing like fish in the back. Like a typical fisherman, Gilpin gets an early start. He drives while an assistant sets out the nets. Yeah, what you got left? So, so I'm, they might talk about it, but if you don't know why the fish are so dangerous, carp are generalists, meaning that they eat literally anything they'll come across. Um, they also spread really rapidly, and they get really big. So they can devastate anything smaller than them. All the plant populations, all the smaller fish populations, they kind of just destroy everything below them. This is how you catch Asian carp. Is it? Those sounds startle the fish and push them into the nets. What? The other unusual thing? These fish jump. Oh, I knew that. The flopping, flailing fish are an invasive species, wreaking havoc <laughs> on lakes and rivers across <laughs> the south and midwest. Just jump straight out. Open any other fishermen out here today. So whenever any of these carps are out of balance, there's too many of them, uh, they're going to have catastrophic ecological effects. That's our silver carp. There are four types of Asian carp. Okay, so I know the government is particularly bad at handling invasive species. We always put a bunch of money into, like, trying to prevent an invasive species from doing bad things, and then it always ends up doing them anyways. And, like, to some degree, the extent of the, the negative effect is lowered. But how much are you really going to get done by paying fishermen to just catch silver carp out of the water? I like I can't I don't know monetarily justify that. I think if you're trying to get rid of an invasive species, you need a plan that involves like eradication, involves some kind of factor that the this fish specifically can't survive. Pulling them out of the water is like okay, well the ones who aren't getting caught in the nets or aren't nearby at any time that the fishing is done are just surviving and then they're just going to restock the population. The moment you stop this this project, you have the same issue exactly again. So places that were once uh, yeah. prized fisheries for fish like smallmouth bass or walleye become... Uh yeah, it's inevitable. I don't know why people keep thinking that if we just like, oh yeah, we'll just bring this invasive species and we'll just keep it in a farm here, you know, in Illinois, and it won't get into the river. It won't get into the river. All it takes is one, man. All it takes is one. It is so big-headed, forgive the pun, to think that, like, something like a carp isn't going to eventually make its way out of an aquaculture system. Bremeyer explains that over the last three decades, the carp have moved up the Mississippi and through its tributaries. Today, the leading edge of the population hovers about 50 miles from Lake Michigan. Shit. The fear now? The carp could get into Lake Michigan and then into the other four Great Lakes. Yeah, that'd be fucked up. Yeah, so right now the Great Lakes are, are invasive carp-free. Um, <clears throat> they have their own plethora of issues to deal with when it comes to uh, invasive species that are making their way into the lakes. But carp are yet to be one of them. And basically these carp are moving up the rivers and they're getting ever closer to entering the lakes. Lake Superior also has a chance of invasion. I know Lake Erie has a chance of invasion as well. Uh, yeah, lamprey problems have been their main thing as of lately. So something like just fishing the carp out of the river doesn't seem like a really probable way to just stop because all it takes is one. All it takes is one carp you didn't fish, makes it all the way up the river and into Lake Michigan, and now all five of the Great Lakes are infected with 
carp. When you power boat through Asian carp habitat, silver carp in particular jump out of the water and can actually hit people in the boats. Over the last damn, that's an actual lit like that's an actual management problem. That's an actual man. I didn't think. Hmm. I was thinking as the jumping is like something interesting, you know, like a side note it can make them easier to catch when you're trying to deal with the invasion. But you can straight up get injured by projectile fish when moving through their habitat. That's fucked up. It's two decades, officials <clears throat> across the upper Midwest have been sounding alarms and spent- What happens when carp fully use the lake's resources? Do they just die? No, so nature always reaches an equilibrium point, um, you know, if external forces aren't involved. So the carp would come into the, to the, to the lakes, they would, their population would explode as they utilized all of the lake's resources. They'd completely devastate the lake's ecosystem, get rid of all of the, the resources that the ecosystem has to offer, and then they'd stop being able to sustain themselves because the ecosystem couldn't sustain them. Their population would start going down, and then it would reach an equilibrium of carp population and wild vegetation population. We're talking about hundreds of years after this equilibrium would be reached. But by that time, by the time that the hundreds of years have passed and we've reached a carp vegetation equilibrium, all of the other fish in the lake are suffering, if not extinct. Tons of vegetation are suffering, if not extinct. Um, it's, you know, things will reach equilibrium, but the destruction along the way is a problem. People seem to think that invasive species will just, like, totally ad eradicate an ecosystem. Like, if it, an invasive species gets into, like, a, you know, a lake or something like that, or into an ecosystem, people think that everything, the ecosystem just dies, which is not true. Um, other than like sea urchins on coral reef, but there's even like a balance there. Um, there's sea, sea urchins in kelp forests. There's there's a balance there as well. There's always an equilibrium in nature. Uh, nature might take a really long time to reach that equilibrium, and there might be a lot of damage along the way. But theoretically, if no outside forces are are involved, there will always be an ecosystem. The ecosystem might not look like you remember it, but it will live on. No ecosystem is going to be completely eradicated or dead. Uh, because of an invasive species. If you think about it, every native species somewhere was once an invasive species there. Like, think about the most established native species, like, I don't know, sunfish. Wherever you find, like, sunfish in the United States, whatever pond, say your local pond has sunfish in it, at one point there were no sunfish in that pond. Sunfish got into that pond at that point. Probably their population exploded, they ate a bunch of shit, and then it reached equilibrium. Everything, everything was an invasive species at one point. Some things just reach equilibrium e easier than others. Base. Chuck Shea is a project manager for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which operates a series of specially designed underwater electrical barriers. So the electricity is what? very rapidly turning on and off. Three sets of eight-ton steel bars send electrical pulses into the water above. Jesus! As the fish comes into the electrical field, it gets a stronger and stronger electrical shock, and most fish will turn around. Shea says this is the largest barrier of its kind. So it prevents all fish from migrating into the Great Lakes via this river, not just carp, it seems like. And if anything, carp are like the biggest and strongest of the fish that are going to be migrating, so they're going to be the most likely to make it through. I don't know that I love this system. You ever just look at this and think, oh my gosh, all of this for some fish? Well, <laughs> shut the fuck up, lady. No, no, I don't. You don't have to answer this question, Chuck. What a stupid fucking question. You ever look around at this and be like, oh, just some fish. How about just the entire ecosystem of the five Great Lakes, a major population, major source of food, a major source of recreational fishing, a billion dollar industry, a hundred billion dollar industry. You ever look around and just be like, well, yeah, it's just some fucking fish. It's more than just some fish, though. It's a, there's an entire... <laughs> He's pissed. He's pissed. <laughs> He's pissed. He'd be pissed just like I'd be pissed. He was like, well, it's it's more just... He's trying to be nice about it, but he's, he's like, shut the fuck up, lady. Ecosystem in the Great Lakes that's that's of concern and that has great economic as well as environmental benefits. Shea says <laughs> the barrier's been... Scientists got to do better at explaining stuff. Because that did not get across. She asked that question, like, just some fish, and you were like, well, it's the economic and ecosystem benefits of the Great Lakes. And she was like, okay, so just some fish. We need, like, better ways of explaining things. You know what? Scientists need to be stop being stuck up. And I say this as a scientist. We need to just say shit in the, like, clickbaity ways that everyone else is saying shit. Like, 
Oh, you ever think it's all, it's all just some fish? Well, you know, Samantha, let me tell you something. Every fish that every person is catching right now in the Great Lakes and they're loving fishing and they're going out on trips and towns are making money and surviving on people coming in, they're all going to fucking die. They're all going to fucking die because carp are going to make it into the river, into the lake, and kill their ecosystem. You know, all that vegetation that's keeping the ecosystem healthy, that's sustaining, you know, crustacean populations and all the other things in the lakes that people like to enjoy, they're going to fucking die too. How's that for science communication? In 2009, Michigan and four other states sued Illinois in a bid to shut down the Chicago canals to keep the carp out of Lake Michigan. The yep. lawsuit went nowhere and other talk of taking the drastic step of closing the canals has met stiff opposition in Illinois because billions of dollars of freight travel through the area's waterways every year. Yeah, this is the crazy thing is like, it's not, it's not just an Illinois problem. It's the entire lakes problem, but it relies entirely on that one state who's gonna be responsible for the initial invasion. It re relies on that state taking responsibility. So this one state has to take the giant billion dollar hit to prevent all the other states from taking the hit. In reality, it should be a federal government because these states are not going to agree on this and nothing's going to happen and carp are going to invade the Great Lakes and probably already have to a small degree uh, and we're just going to be fucked. Why not work all together? Because think about it, it doesn't work that way. If you're Illinois, do you want to lose a billion dollar industry so that all the states next to you can benefit? No, no one wants to do that. No one wants to lose billions of dollars to help their neighbors. Maybe if your neighbors were helping you back, if there was a mutual, you know, something there, but there's not. There's not. You are taking a pure and utter disadvantage on your end in order to, you know, help your neighbors, essentially. So really, it needs to be a federal government mandated thing. Are carps really that bad? Yeah. Look at any place that carp have, carp have you know, invaded within the United States. Even just small populations can completely devastate ecosystems, make them places where you can't fish, you can't do anything ecological. I mean, the entire sport fishing industry of, of the Great Lakes is at stake. Are there any benefits to carp? I mean, in their native environments, I'm sure that they fit perfectly well within the ecosystem. But in non-native ecosystems, they tend to just be crazy population bursting generalists that destroy everything below them. Nine teams of professional fishermen can each catch up to three tons of carp in a day, sometimes more. Biologists ride along to document the catch. If there's three tons worth of these carp to catch on a daily basis for each fisherman, I think you're beyond the point where you can just fish them out of the water. That's way too many fucking carp. Since this program started in 2010, the state says it has caught 7.5 million pounds of carp, decreasing the leading edge population by 93%. Okay. Someday that you, you know what? Just... Fair enough. I mean that those numbers seem like there's actually an impact being had. I think it's a it's a band aid on a fucking open wound, but it's better than nothing, I suppose. And that's why there's a whole new line of carp defenses being planned at the Brandon Road Lock and Dam, about 10 miles before the existing electric barriers. The Army Corps is proposing to install more electric barriers underwater sound machines to scare the fish and <laughs> something called an air bubble curtain to flush out any carp caught between barges traveling through mm. the state of illinois has agreed to sponsor Dude, we're the actually building fucking defense systems <laughs> it's cool I, I i can understand the thought of all this for fish we are literally building moats trenches barriers fucking war machines Invasive species in Australia. Government uses herpes virus to kill carp. People have been talking about this in chat. Australia releases plans for its so-called Carpageddon. To combat the rising carp population, Australia plans to release a carp-specific herpes virus into the basin. The virus attaches to their skin, gills, and kidneys and Actual makes it bio difficult warfare. for the fish to breathe. The virus multiplies in the carp for about a week. And fish usually die 24 hours after they first show signs of the electrical warfare, bio warfare. While the virus kills the majority of carp populations, it has no effect on native fish species or other aquatic animals. Okay, yeah, but here's the question. Does Australia have native carp? Yeah, I don't think Australia has native carp. 
So yeah, you can just fucking eliminate all the carp. The United States doesn't have that privilege because we have non-native carp. We have carp that are meant to be here. You can't just use a generalist virus unless you could get a species-specific virus, but I mean, there's not enough of a genetic difference, I think. What about the nuclear option? Yeah, nuclear option, chemical warfare. Oh, we already use chemical warfare all the time. Can I get my carbine rifle and shoot as many carp as I can? I can't stop you. Whoa.